Um, so I would like to uh, let everyone know that uh, Michael Fig, who I see is here on the meeting, uh, uh, has now uh, joined Agoric, uh, and he is going to be taking the lead on um, uh, Secure ECMAScript and uh, Jesse and Tessie and and uh, in particular the um, uh, the next immediate thing being the uh, uh, SES uh, safe module system. Um, uh, so this is all completely uh, uh, central uh, as as Agora goes forward. And um, uh, I welcome Michael Fig to. Uh, uh, to his first meeting as representing Agora. Thank you, Mark. Okay, Patrick, it's your show. Yeah, uh, Peter, are you there? No. Hello? Yes, I'm there. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know, maybe you want to introduce the thing? Or... Yeah, let me, um, I can put up the, the document, the most recent version of the document. Um, yeah. And that will give us um, a visual, I think. Uh, so that should be there now, if people can see. I can see it. Okay, great. So um, I guess the, the, so we had a, uh, a call with TC53, I don't know, a couple weeks ago now, I guess, a week and a half ago. Uh, where we, uh, where Patrick introduced the work um, that we've been doing to implement uh, compartments in the XS engine. Um, there are, um, and since then, we, we got some feedback from Mark on a couple points that we uh, have tried to address. And then, um, so there's, there's a couple things. We can either start this by, uh, if people aren't familiar with the compartment work that we've done, we can start this by going through um, kind of the, the big picture of what's there and, and some of those examples. Or if, uh, if, if, you know, if most everyone's up to speed, we can uh, jump into the, um, the differences um, from the original work and now. Assume we are not up to speed, start from scratch, and that will also make <laughs> uh, the record, seriously, uh, that will also make the recording of uh, what you're about to present uh, that much more widely useful. Okay, so I will um, do a very, very brief um, introduction to kind of our scope and then uh, turn it over to Patrick to, to work on some of the, to, to talk about the technical details. Um, so Modable as a company is focused on embedded JavaScript. And so we are typically running on devices that have tens of kilobytes of free RAM um, for execution and maybe a few megabytes of space to hold the code. So our, but we're running the same JavaScript language that you'll find in, in a web browser. So our, so our runtime characteristics are remarkably different. Um, the secure ECMAScript work is interesting to us um, because we very much want to be able to run third-party code inside of these small devices. So I, I did a talk this past weekend at Maker Fair where I talked about um, installing our engine onto a light bulb um, to control that, and it works very nicely. Um, but we'd like to be able to put third-party apps on there, for example, that can use the infrastructure of the light bulb in a, in a, in a controlled way. Um, but that they can run arbitrary JavaScript on there otherwise. Um, so the, the secure ECMAScript work is, which solves that problem in a, in a very elegant, very clean way. Um, and so that's, that's very appealing. The, the challenge is how do we run it efficiently? Um, and so um, rather than focusing on realms, which is, was kind of, I think, the, the starting point for a lot of this, um, we focused on um, compartments, which are morally somewhat similar, but not, but lighter weight. Yeah, um, let, 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 let me just interrupt with a bit of terminology. Sure. Nit, nitpicking, uh, pedantic terminology, uh, which is uh, right now in the spec, there's one concept called realm. Uh, in order to introduce compartment and have it fit into the spec well, uh, what we're doing is uh, terminology wise, is we're um, creating uh, three category names. There's uh, root realm, which corresponds directly to the current realm concept, compartment, and then the common category that, that contains both, 
is the realm. And the reason for that is that it's the realm that in the spec is the execution context that uh, code evaluates in, including the global scope. Um, so both compartments and root realms are kinds of realm. And the thing that we're um, uh, doing, uh, that you're doing, that Salesforce is doing, that Agoric is doing, is um, in the process of trying to have the support for compartments be divorced from the support for root realms. So that mm -hmm. even in your, when you're in an environment where there's only a single root realm, um, uh, that you can still have multiple compartments. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I, I, the terminology is still settling into my brain. Um, the other significant difference from kind of the original secure ECMAScript work and um, what we've done with XS is that on the microcontrollers, we, um, we really only use modules. We never use programs. Um, and so everything is, um, everything's running in strict mode, everything's running inside a module. And so the original um, Secure ECMAScript work uh, really didn't address how to load modules and, and how to um, restrict access to, to modules. And so that was something that in uh, the work on compartments that Patrick um, added on top of that. Um, and uh, Mark gave us some refinements on in, in last week's meeting. So um, with that as background, uh, Patrick, do you wanna, you wanna drive from here? So the, um, uh, so quickly, uh, XS uh, is used by Modable in, the, in what we call the Modable runtime. And Modable runtime as uh, from, from, the, from the beginning, what XS is doing, compiling all, all, uh, all those modules. And, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Pat, Pat, Patrick, could you repeat the last sentence? It broke up in the middle of it. Okay, to the, uh, uh, to, to uh, prepare a, mod, a modable runtime, Excess is compiling the module and then linking the module into a ROM um, image that is uh, installed on the, on the microcontroller. Uh, what, what's important, uh, to remember is that this ROM image contains uh, all the built-ins and so on, and all the built-ins are frozen. So the, uh, by nature, the way we are working is like the beginning of the, uh, what you, you are talking about when you say that the, uh, to uh, build a, a secure HECMAS script uh, ones, root ones, you need to froze and all the primordial and so on. That's done by uh, the, the linker, uh, the, uh, it's done by access for the uh, modable runtime. So what, uh, what we didn't have at all, uh, uh, I mean, months ago, were uh, worms. Sorry, my pronunciation of that word is terrible, but uh, rounds, okay? So uh, I, I, work, I worked on, on, on excess uh, to add the idea of having uh, separate uh, running uh, context, separate environment inside the same, inside the same machine. We didn't, uh, I didn't try to implement the whole round stuff because uh, the, the one stuff starts by duplicate, uh, copying, duplicating the, the building and so on. And we really don't want to do when we have so, so little harm. So that, that's why we focused on compartments because compartments are created by, uh, on, the, on the basis of the um, frozen uh, realm that is in the home on, on, the, on the microcontroller. So the, the, the programming interface is really uh, for us to test and in no way it represents like what it should be at the end or whatever. It, it's really like the, the, to create a compartment, you use the compartment constructor, which is more like the worker constructor than anything else. Uh, meaning that it takes uh, a from, which is the uh, the module, the, the specifier of the module that will begin 
the execution of the compartment. And domains is what you are familiar with. It's an object whose properties are added to the global object of the new compartment, uh, default to the empty object. Modules, and we will get there in more deta details later, is an object that defines a whitelist of modules that the compartment can, can import. Uh, the idea is that we need some way to constrain what uh, modules can import inside the compartment. Options are a lot like the worker options. Uh, so the default for us, access is type module because that's the only thing we support. So I don't know, can I scroll that or? No. Yeah, I should, I should just let you know that um, I have not, uh, I am not familiar with the modern uh, worker API and I suspect other people um, uh, or might not be. A bar and then options like type, type module is uh, beginning to be supported, I think, but there's, uh, I mean, type script and then you have all, all kinds of options that are the same, same kind of thing. Currently, we, we support only type module. Uh, and uh, I, I quickly noted there uh, that thing only works in the modal runtime. It only works when uh, there is a, a frozen run in, in ROM ready to create compartment from. Uh, access support all kinds of things with JavaScript, uh, scripts and sloppy mode and whatever. And, uh, and so you have, we have a different runtime, for instance, to pass the test to 62 case. And in this runtime, you cannot create a compartment because you don't have a frozen uh, to create a compartment. The, when you create a compartment, the um, inst you can I, uh, can I rewind just a second. Um, you had type equals module. Are there plans for things besides module, like WASM or stuff like that? I know for Node we had to do something a little more uh, odd to deal with WASM. Oh yeah, maybe yes. This is. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, this options parameter is uh, like to open the uh, like we use a lot of dictionaries everywhere. So it's to open the programming interface to some conventional uh, properties. Currently, I, I only have the type, but we can have all kind of things. It's to be, I mean, to be uh, investigated. The, uh, when, you, you, when you create a compartment, you get an instance of compartment. And this instance of compartment has two, has, uh, has two head-only properties. The first one is named global, and it's the global object of the compartment. And uh, the second one is, is, called, uh, is named export, and it's the module, module namespace of the compartment. Uh, so I, we talk about type equal, equal program and so on. We cannot test that because Access does not support program currently in the model runtime. So to, to show a little bit how it works, I built some example uh, that uh, uh, show how you can use the. Um, uh, firstly, how you can use um, compartment with separate global. Uh, global scope. So in uh, in modable, uh, I mean, we talk about mod and app uh, because that's that's who we name. Like the app is basically the start compartment. It's the it's the it's the thing that launch the the microcontroller that boots the microcontroller, and then we can load uh, on the fly uh, what we call mod which are uh, typically uh, something you want to run in a CPU uh, and different front. So <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me make sure I understand this example. Um, the, 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 the variable name global here should actually be global this. Is that, that correct? Yeah. So for that, uh, excess like node, I think, as global as global this. But we, we should, yeah, it should be global. And um, 
the, the fact is that uh, since the first example are about global, uh, we uh, show we, I, I, I use global. Okay, so uh, here uh, we have a compartment module which uh, defines a global x, a global increment function, and then uh, a test function that uh, just trace the uh, the increment uh, call increment and trace something. The app code, uh, so the start compartment code, we find the exact same thing, and then can we scroll? And then we create a compartment with mod js here above. So let mod equal new compartment mod, and then an execute test, and then mod global test to, uh, to put the function inside the compartment twice. And of course, the results are 0, 0, 1, 1, because the global x and the global increment function are separate, living in their uh, separate uh, global scope. Uh, you know what you can, of course, do also is to share global. So uh, here we have a, a much simpler uh, mod uh, code, which is using an increment function that is a global variable to be passed as an end domain. And the, the app.js begins like the previous one, except that when it's creating the compartment there, uh, it's passing the increment function as an endowment. And then when the app executes the same test, mod global test, test, and so on, of course, we get 0, 1, 2, 3, because uh, it's, it's exactly the same increment function that's called uh, every time. This is, uh, this, this is just to show that we have separate global scope, and but that we get the the uh, compartment can also uh, give to other compartments some uh, reference to uh, stuff in their own global scope. Uh, the, um, some, uh, so, some, something funny that, uh, which is of little interest for the security thing, but that I tried is that if you create a compartment and instead of and you pass like global this as the endowment, you basically have a, a, a peer compartment. It, it does exactly access to the same thing, and everything works as usual. The, uh, so, Sorry, could, could, you, could you say that again? So if you, if you do a compartment and you pass global this as the uh, endowment, uh, in fact, the compartment share the same uh, reference the same variable, ref the same global variable, the objects, the names, and so on. So, I mean, I'm, so, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little con con I'm, I'm confused by that. I'm sorry, I'm confused by that because normally the endowments are copied onto a fresh global. It's, copy. it's a copy, but it's not a deep copy, so they share the, the thing. So, like, I mean, if you have uh, uh, if you have classes inside your global scope and you pass your global scope to the compartment, the compartment can access the same, the same classes. Okay, but in this example, where there's a top level assignable X variable? Well-defined global increment, and I only pass that one. So the only function from the app global scope that the mod has access to is the increment. Well, okay, but if you had passed global this as the endowment, yes, exactly. That's then, the, it, it then the, 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 the if you pass the, global this as the as the endowment, then you in fact open to your compartment all the all the, the global your global scope. So it, it it was just on the side of uh, remarks. It just it surprised me that it was working so well. So next thing is about module because in uh, in access we 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 are, we are in module we use module and uh, of course uh, we when you begin to use module you rarely use the, the global scope usually you define feature in their own scope and and and, and export them so let let uh, for the module example let's uh, let's have a 
a module that we will reuse, increment.js, which has a local variable uh, x, and, uh, and export a default function that returns x plus x. Uh, so by default, at runtime, the compartments load module separately. Uh, so compartment have also separate module scope. For instance, uh, let's have um, um, the mod JS, uh, the module that we import increment for increment and export the same test function that trace mod and the call to increment. And then in the app, we do the exact same thing. We import increment for increment and if a test function that trace the same. Then if the, uh, if the application is creating a new compartment with mod and execute the same test and then mod export test because it gets access to the test function through the module namespace of mod, it, it will get 0, 0, 1, 1 because in fact, the increment compartment has been loaded twice, instantiated twice, and so they are like separate x uh, variable and separate uh, increment uh, increment function. So that's that's for uh, that's for like the separation. So now what what uh, what can we do if we want to share something? Uh, so currently. Uh, the in uh, in in the modable runtime we uh, to build uh, to build this we have a manifest and the manifest has all kind of instruction and the the one that matters here is uh, that we are able to tell the access linker to preload some of the module so uh, in your in your doc uh, in his document Mark is talking about vetted customization code. Uh, preloading module is part of that. Like at link time, so before running, uh, at link time, the access linker load the, the module that are listed there and store their, uh, so the bodies are executed at build time, not at run time. And so all the created object and closure and so on are stored in ROM with the built-in uh, that uh, are by default there. So the this uh, yes. So it's important to note that uh, uh, the module like the built-ins are shared by compartment. But of course, access as a mechanism to alias uh, theirs because they they are the when I mean they are shared by compartment. It mean I mean that the preloaded module, the closure and home are really uh, in home. So even if they are not frozen, they, they cannot change. So access as, as a mechanism that uh, if, um, if a machine, an engine is trying to change something that in ROM is not frozen, uh, the object is automatically aliased in RAM. And so you can, uh, the object or the closure is automatically aliased in RAM and can be, can be modified. So now let's imagine that we built with Incre the increment module preloaded, so shared, and we have the exact same code as before, so the exact same module importing increment uh, and tracing, and the same app code uh, uh, importing increment and tracing, and then uh, also creating the a compartment with mod and so on, and executing the same code as before. But now we have the trace inside access buff is 0, 1, 2, 3, because the uh, increment module is shared by the mod and, and the app. So, uh, and the X variable, the, the initial version of it will be in ROM, but since it's not a, it's not a constant, the closure will be aliased in, in ROM when it will be modified. So, uh, that, that's, there's there's an uh, example with globals and modules are uh, to show that we can have both uh, like separation and sharing using either the global scope or the mo the, the modules. The uh, the next step is uh, which which uh, 
yes, exactly, are uh, module maps, which means what we um, what we pass to uh, the uh, the compartment to constrain uh, which module uh, modules can import it running inside the compartment. Uh, yeah. Peter and I have discussed a lot about that, and it's not over. But uh, currently, uh, the uh, the compartment, uh, the map, uh, is uh, mapping like bare bone uh, module specifier to module path, and uh, is used by uh, the module map uh, of um, the compartment is used by access to uh, filter all access to uh, to module uh, either by with the backbone identifier or by path or so and so on. So the, uh, that's, that's what uh, a module map currently looks like. So I have some questions for uh, that. I, I, I put it in second. I don't, I don't. Sorry, Pat, Pat, Patrick, your audio is breaking up. Uh, we missed the last couple of cents. Uh, uh, just Patrick, just so you know, I think we missed the last couple of sentences. Oh, can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I'm now it sounds good. And Bradley had some questions. Uh, yes. Yes, I didn't. I, I, yes, I hear, I hear him, but I didn't understand the question posed because I did. Um, so I had a couple of questions about this. Uh, namely, right now it takes strings as the values. So uh, is it possible to share modules between compartments? And also, uh, what do you do if you're dealing with something that's not whitelisted? Is that uh, something like a dynamic import? Is that being looked at at all? No, uh, currently we uh, we don't we didn't look at that at all because uh, the um, uh, it's it, I mean we we are not sure yet at all, uh, I mean, it, we are really open to your suggestions there, is that we, we don't know what to do with like require like mechanism or import, dynamic import like mechanism inside compartment. Uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you talked a lot about that already, so I don't want to, but no, it's not. I mean, we country there is no such thing. There is a require function inside excess. But currently, only the staff compartment can use it. So there is no, I mean, yes. But the, uh, I mean, safely, I mean, there is no, no uh, because the implication has have to be discussed. So uh, the, um, so the, the fact is, uh, I, I want to quickly finish that. Uh, the uh, uh, Compartment can uh, get their own compartment and delete some of the some of the properties to restrict what the compartment will do. For instance, if the app is getting this compartment app map, which by default contains all the modules that are there in the home, uh, preloaded or not, preloaded, shaped or not, and uh, it deletes the increment entry in the map, then when it creates a mod compartment and that mod compartment tries to import increment from increment, that will fail. Uh, and it will fail in the import phase of loading the, the, the module. So no code will be executed. It will fail right away. The, uh, so the, currently, the, um, uh, of, uh, when you create a compartment, the map you pass cannot uh, can only give access to module that the current, the compartment can access itself. So you cannot uh, you cannot like give access to something you don't have access to. Okay. 
to, to be sure to enforce such constraints, and that's new since last time we, we talked, each compartment has its own compartment constructor. Uh, so there is um, like the compartment map uh, is really returning the module map of that, uh, that the compartment, the running compartment. Uh, the, that parameter, that map, can also be used to provide different implementation. Can we scroll a little bit? Uh, scroll. Oh, that works. Okay, thank you. Uh, look, so this, this example is a little bit strange, but uh, let's imagine we have mod, a module which involves vary from vary and trace the same. Name being a global variable that will be passed to the end of and let's imagine that the app uh, has in its, in its map uh, a module decrement, increment, and the mod uh, that we just see that. It can create a new compartment with mod, uh, name it mod1, so we can see something after, and then pass vary, uh, pass decrement as the vary uh, uh, specifier, and then create a second module based on the same code, and pass increment as the vary. And then, of course, if I execute the mod one export test, mod two export test, it starts with zero, uh, with zero, and then for the one decrementing, it becomes minus one, and then becomes plus one for the one that's incrementing. The this is more like uh, I mean, it's more theoretical than than anything. But the the fact is, uh, what's interesting is the. Um, in this case, the application has the possibility not only to restrict what module can do, but to really uh, define uh, uh, an environment where, uh, like the same, uh, the same specifier uh, get access to a different version of the same uh, programming interface and so on. The, could you could you scroll back to the could you scroll back to the previous page? The restriction one. Uh, uh, the source code for the, uh, the the source code for this example. You the you were showing the second page of the source code, and and I kind of already lost the yeah. There's the mod JS is what I wanted to say. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The court very from the, the mod JS in, in both vary from vary and then trace. The, the thing. So um, here, it, uh, it's like a module uh, that uh, doesn't know what uh, oh. involves something that vary, but it doesn't know in which direction. Okay, and it doesn't have to know. And the application decide in which direction there is the variation by passing either the increment module or the decrement module that I forget to put in the document, but I mean, you can imagine what it is. And uh, the, uh, all, the, all, these, all these examples are, uh, are funny uh, inside, inside Excess. They are not, um, I mean, like just IDs. They, they are my test code to see that if the IDs I, uh, I, we add uh, are working. So uh, this is all real, real thing. The um, the uh, so uh, if we want to continue to uh, to, to finish the, on this document, uh, there's one more thing that I did since last time. Uh, I mean, most I mean most modable runtime time is no ev evaluator. So uh, the eval new function and so on are just not there, but it's possible. If you have a bigger, uh, if you have a, a bigger microcontroller and so on, we we, we can have of course evaluator inside the, uh, inside Access. So um, for that for that Access try to implement what the Mark specified, uh, what's what's in Mark's document, the constructor of all syntactically created functions and so on, uh, always throws. So there is no way to do a, to have a function take this constructor and trying to use it to create another function that doesn't work anywhere. Okay, and each compartment has its own function generator functions and so on and a constructor 
and its own eval function. Uh, uh, can, I, can, can I, Patrick, let me interrupt you with a question here. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, what we did in the uh, Realm shim and the SES shim yes. uh, is that uh, we gave each compartment its own function constructor and its own eval function. Um, yeah. And as you're showing at the top of, of the shared screen here, uh, the, uh, we also replaced the, um, uh, the built-in constructor, uh, the, the built-in shared constructor, uh, mm -hmm. that um, the constructor property on function prototype points back to. Uh, yeah. We replaced that with something that always throws, like you're showing here. Exactly. We did that for generator function, async function, and async generator function. Yes. Uh, what we did not do was create a separate per compartment evaluator for generator function, async function, and async generator function because those things don't have global names. In uh, ECMAScript does not give them global names. And therefore, um, there's no uh, there's no names in which to provide them uh, per compartment. Yes. No, that's true. Yes. My, yes. No, no, for sure. There is no, I mean, the only way to access dev is doing some, something that is not a node. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, and there's no, there, the thing that you can access by navigation yes. is necessarily shared, I like have, your f.constructor example. And therefore, the thing that's implicitly shared must only throw. Yeah, exactly. So there's no way to dynamically create a generator of function function. But that's the case. We can, we can do that. Yeah, only the function constructor and the eval function. And there's no loss of functionality there because anything you can do with the, with the function constructors, you can just do with the eval function yes. by, just, by, by just building the right syntax. Absolutely. OK. Okay, let's let's go there. Yes, then uh, the uh, like uh, just to uh, check that it works. Uh, you can in the like in the separate global example before uh, you can uh, replace the increment function by this uh, global increment new function return that or global function return that x plus plus, and it works exactly the same like the, the, the function is created in the compartment uh, and, or, and the eval is done in the compartment itself. So they, there is no, uh, no um, bias there. It's, uh, it, that's, that's also, uh, that's also working currently. Yes. I should know that I, I have to remove the... And I think that's the end of the document. No? Yes. Okay. I, I, uh, on, the, on the very last box, I have a question there. Yes. Uh, so you're showing, uh, you're showing the direct eval syntax. Is that, um, uh, uh, does that have the semantics of a direct eval? Uh, is always in a module. So yes, exactly. I don't know if that affects this question. Yes, it affects that question. So, uh, is, is, so is it a direct eval? It's a thick mode, uh, yes. Uh, yes, I think. Uh, let me check. Uh, that, that code is calling the eval function, and it's not, uh, yes. It's calling the eval function that I have been to create. That I'm sure. Uh, maybe it's incorrect, but it's, it's calling the okay. function. So the, the way I, um, I, I like to uh, write down an indirect eval call um, uh, to avoid uh, having it look like a direct eval uh, is my, my convention, which admittedly is ugly, is open paren, one comma eval, close paren, open paren, quote, x plus plus, close quote, close paren. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, the, the comma expression uh, surrounding the uh, the lookup of the lexical name eval uh, yes. prevents the uh, the overall function call from being uh, parsed as a 
direct eval special form. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do I, I'm not sure I know this collection, but so it's column, no, comma, comma. Is open, right. open paren, yes. one, yes. comma, eval, yes. close paren. Yes. O open paren and then the 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 string argument uh, close paren. Oh, okay. So you're, so you're 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 obtaining the value of the eval lexical variable, but you're obtaining it as the value of a comma expression. Okay. Okay, I will try that. Okay. It should work. It should work. I mean, it's one of the same test two sixty. Yes. So. Um, uh, so, so first of all, I want to say uh, this looks really excellent. Uh, it really, um, uh, you know, solves a lot of the problem that's been facing this group next, uh, which is um, uh, how to create an API for safe modules uh, for SES that does not assume runtime evaluation. Uh, so and and how to and how to do it in a way that's divorced from root realm. So I really like your uh, compartment constructor. Um, with regard to the module map issue, um, uh, I still have a few issues there. Um, it sounds like you're still exposing uh, the knowledge of the full untranslated path names uh that's currently being discussed uh i have a version that was very well where the value is an opaque symbol in fact but i don't know if that will satisfy anything uh, that you want but that's uh like instead instead of having uh like um the name of the property being an identifier and a specifier and the value being a path we keep the name because that's the thing that compartment will use in their import statement so we keep the specifier and then this is replaced by an opaque symbol like something just uh, a symbol that the, the, that the compartment itself cannot uh, know what, what it, what's inside. Uh, we tried that uh, to see if it, was, if it still worked and everything still worked. So there's no, um, there's no need, no. there's no need for access to if there's value explicitly. Uh, it just, it just currently, uh, you can, you can have like, of course, th this symbol will be unique by, uh, by, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in the map, okay? Uh, so, I mean, uh, each module will have a separate symbol. Yes. Okay. Here is another version of the same document. So that, that's basically what, what, what it is, in fact. And, okay, very interesting. And, uh, and so uh, that, that way, and, and in fact, I think uh, that's even the version that's currently committed in the branch in the double tree. So the, uh, that's why... Uh, it's with that that I tested this this morning, and uh, and so it's uh, I, uh, I, I'm not I'm not, I'm really not a specialist about like hiding information and and all those things. So I, I I it's up to I mean this group and so on to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to tell me or to know more uh, because you know much more about this problem that I that I do. But what I, I just wanted to show here is that the, uh, it's possible, like this is information about the different module. We can, uh, we can add it and keep all the functionalities because there's no, uh, there's nothing I mean, that should prevent uh, that. Okay. In the, in the you also mentioned so, that uh, it, it, what I mean is that the example. So, uh, I don't know if you can hear me. The symbols, the symbols are very similar to what we've proposed and have been trying to figure out to work with cycles in Node. Uh, we have reasons that we want it to be opaque 
as well. Um, but the cycle problem is still not resolved. If you want to go into details about that, you can contact me uh, for Please. more in-depth stuff. Is there, is there something we can read that you can post a link to? Uh, I've posted it before. It might be a little bit out of date. Uh, one second. Um, I will have to find it again. I don't have it on hand. Okay, uh, I have another question. Um, uh, uh, Patrick, you said that each compartment gets its own uh, eval and its own function constructor if you're in an environment with uh, separate evaluation. So it's uh, compartment constructor. Hello? Hello, I, I think we... we, uh, we so it has its own, every compartment has its own compartment constructor. Okay, good. That was, that was my question. Every compartment has its own compartment <laughs> constructor. So uh, each compartment has its own compartment constructor. So compartment okay. is really uh, like defined for the compartments. There is no overlap. Okay. So when, comp when compartment constructor A makes a, com a compartment B, yes. it's made the compartment B with limited access. It's also, it's also uh, uh, made for B a compartment constructor yes. that's, on the, on the, that's in scope inside B, where yes. that compartment constructor can only make compartments that are no more that have no more access than B itself has. Exactly. Okay. Good. Exactly. Um, sorry, I, I did have one one question about um, uh, may, maybe it's um, maybe it's not in scope, but uh, or I missed it. Uh, but when you give a module map, um, I, I guess the the part where a module is uh, mapped to a compartment uh, would that imply that uh, every compartment gets a different instance of the module, regardless of um, you know if module to share state? No, the module maps contain both the shared and the not shared module. So the the fact that the module is shared is not uh, an information of inside the module. It could be if you if it is something one, but but uh, currently the uh, the only place where we define what is shared and not shared is uh, has to be a build time because uh, to share a module the linker needs to execute its uh, its body uh, at build time and uh, and that's that's all the module is shared. Uh, yeah. That, and uh, and so, but and but currently, I didn't provide any way for compartments to know which module is shared or not. If it is something that you uh, believe would be tricky, it's of course possible. I mean, like we can use another accessor to get like uh, uh, the list of the shared module and uh, the list of the not shared module. I mean, like that's no the information. Yeah. Inside the engine, of course. But I mean, the... so can can I clarify my 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 concern or 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 the scenario that I'm thinking of? Um, I'm mapping uh, app to a particular um, uh, specifier, and that specifier has not been imported. Um, and in one compartment in the map, um, I'm importing app. And app is importing something else that maps to a different specifier in that particular compartment. Does that affect which um, which um, um, module app gets to receive, just because the module map of the compartment um, modifies um, the specif the particular um, you know specifier using its own map, or does app get um, um, you know the mapping from somewhere else. That that's really what I was concerned about. Um, yes, each uh, each compartment has a, 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 like the module map is by compartment, 
and the mapping is defined for that compartment. And that's true for the staff compartment and for everything else. That, that mapping doesn't change. I mean, we can imagine to have a feature to change it, but frankly, it doesn't change. So um, inside one compartment, the execution inside one compartment, the, the same uh, identifier will be always mapped to the same uh, module. Okay? But uh, you can create compartments uh, that will be separate compartments that will access module, uh, either the same module with another name or a different, different module with the same name. And that module can be linked to a mapping from the original compartment from which it was created, um, uh, you know, uh, exposing um, a link from app to increment of a different module, um, um, you know, because it has already been instantiated. That's, that's what I, you know. Um, okay, I, I guess, I, guess I, I need to go through the doc a little bit more to clarify the question, but uh, thank you. Know, if you can, uh formulate with us an example that, that would help me a lot in practical sense. Okay, let, let me work on that and I'll buzz in a minute or two, okay? Thanks. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, have, I have some concerns along the same lines. The, um, the module, it's, it's, uh, there, there's the module map and then there's the preload list. Um, yes. And uh, the module map is really, about uh, naming static modules, whereas the preload yes. is really about sharing module instances. Yes. Okay. Um, and, I mean, no. Yeah, so, so um, and the preload list is global to the system as a whole. Yes. So that's that's basically where my concern is that um, you might want a finer grained sharing of uh, instance linkage. In other words, um, uh, you have a compartment A that loads uh, increment uh, and instantiates it, uh, and uh, then you have a, a compartment B that is able to uh, import increment, but uh, there's, there's no way in this language to say specifically that when B imports increment, it should get the module instance that was uh, loaded uh, into compartment A. No, indeed, there's no way. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, th I think we're going, I think, I think as this continues, I think this is an excellent starting point. Yeah, uh, no, we can do a lot, uh, we can yeah, do it. That, that, that's why I put a lot of like caution uh, words uh, before I start in, in time module map is that it's really something Peter and I keep talking about it uh, and changing minds and changing stuff. Uh, and so it's really open to the different design. But yes, no, you're right completely. Yeah. Um, I think what we're going to uh, need, but not not urgently, but we should we should work it out, uh, is the ability to um, uh, to have a module map that causes wiring between uh, specified wiring between modules uh, through um, renaming of specifiers uh, uh, of shared instances when we want shared instances, but, but as with your preload thing, uh, we need to make sure that, that you know, we can distinguish, um, uh, share, you know, we can separately express when we want to share instances versus just when we're trying to map specifier names in order to share source code. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, are, you, are you familiar with our concept of pure modules versus resource modules? Uh, I, from your presentation at TC53, but not much more than that, yeah. Okay, so from our perspective, uh, increment is a resource module. Yes. Okay. Uh, and to have increment be 
globally shared from the point of view of SES is strange um, uh, uh, because what that means is that, that everything within that SES system has access to the same increment instance and uh, can, thereby, can thereby all communicate with each other. Yes. Um, but to have a increment instance be a resource that can be uh, shared in a more local way between compartments uh, would not be weird. Okay. As long as, as long as it was done explicitly. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a way to, um, uh, 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 because you're, you're doing all this stuff with ROM uh, yeah. and you're so concerned about uh, immutability, uh, yeah. do you have a way to say um, uh, that a particular module really should be a pure module and that if it has any top level mutable state, that that's an error? No, we currently do, we don't have that, and uh, it can uh, it comes here. Yeah, I mean, from time to time in in our discussion, basically what we do is we, when we build what you would call a queue module, we use only cons uh, constant instead of let, okay, and uh, we throw, we throw, uh, we are we freeze manually everything okay mm -hmm. uh, and then that module is uh, will never get does not uh, is not part of the aliasing mechanism uh, inside excess so what the linker does is uh, when it's loading a module and the module and then uh, it's loading the module that's creating closure and object and so on and so on then when it's about to, to be the, the home image to free uh, that would be done, it checks if the if all the closure are constants and if all the objects that have been created by the body of module are frozen then there's a, if no there's no way to alias them okay and uh, we do that because the aliasing mechanism is uh, expensive so we try to have as little as possible, um, like mutable thing in the home. In fact. Okay. So, that for, sense, but, so, but we don't have the concept of like making it an error. That is, that's what. That's what. Okay, but you but you do have a static check. I yeah. mean, you do have a build build time check rather. You have a build time check because you're doing the check when you put it into ROM. Yes, and and we do that and. Uh, the whole discussion were, were about that were not from a security point of view. It was from a like uh, spare uh, to spare ham point of view. So that uh, yeah. we, we we don't we don't want that aliasing mechanism for everything that the, the module uh, the preloaded module are creating. So we try to uh, I mean limit that as much as possible. And um, and and in fact we we. Uh, we generally achieve, a, a, I mean, a huge amount of all the modules we, uh, we build for apps and so on are completely uh, constant, frozen, and everything. So it's not, we have very few aliasable objects in, 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 of um, closure in, in current, in those systems. Okay. But, uh, so Mark, just, yeah. this is Peter, sorry, just, um, to your question, are you asking if there's some way to validate that that's the case for a given module at build time? Or are you yes. just asking? Yeah, so there is no, as far as I know, um, there's no way during, like to, to indicate in the build that you expect something to have no mutable state and to confirm that that's the case. Yeah. The, tools, the tools know it, we could, could add that, but it's never been something that we've made explicit in the tools. Okay. So, 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 for, for, so this is one of these wonderful alignment between um, uh, your implementation concerns and security concerns. They both push very, very much in the same direction. Yeah. Um, so let me, let me suggest that with the preload declaration that you're showing, 
uh, yeah. that you could you could distinguish two forms of preload. Uh, a preload of pure things versus preload of aliasable things. Okay. And if you and the reason to distinguish it from a security perspective uh, is that a preload of pure things is safe. It does not allow any communication. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and generally, that's the way we've been thinking about uh, module linkage for CES is that we have a shared pure module loader that loads only pure modules. And those are the ones that are shared across the root realm, uh, shared between all the compartments. And then we have a per compartment loader. Uh, your structure is very, very parallel to uh, what we've been thinking with your preload being like the shared loader. Um, but uh, the if you just had, let's say, two different uh, preload directives, where the default one is the one where you were you were essentially asserting that uh, the module is pure, so that if you accidentally had a module like increment that was right. on that list, that you would get a build time error. Okay. Yeah, that's yes. I can look at that. To yes. Okay. And the wonderful thing about sharing preloaded modules, I'm sorry, sharing pure modules, yeah. is that uh, you're sharing identity. Um, so for example, um, uh, if we have, um, uh, you know, if there's a class, let's say, a top level class inside a pure module, mm -hmm. then uh, different, then, then if, if compartments um, uh, X and Y both import the class uh, and then one of them instantiates it, to, let's say class foo. So X and Y both import class foo, uh, X instantiates it to create an instance of foo and passes it to Y. Uh, y will, if, it, if Y does instance of foo, uh, it will find the answer is yes. Yes. Uh, whereas uh, if they were not preloaded and everybody got their own copy of the module, even if it was pure, yes. uh, they would be separate identities. Exactly. Yes. Okay, good, good. We call that identity discontinuity. Is oh, wow. when, uh, identity discontinuity is when you've got uh, what is conceptually a single abstraction, but because it's separately evaluated with separate identities, um, uh, that uh, you have um, uh, these surprising uh, disagreements, like um, uh, uh, one guy's instance of foo is not an instance of the other guy's foo class. Yes. Okay, good, good. Then that completely, yes, okay, cool. Good. Yeah. Um, so I put together a gist. I'm um, just going to share my screen. Um, and hopefully it, it just points out the uh, concerns you were trying to get to, Mark. Um, just one second. Oh, man. All right. I'm just going to share my whole screen. Yeah. And while you're doing that, uh, Bradley, I clicked on the doc link you pasted into chat, and it asked me to ask you for permission. Oh, I'll make it public. OK. Um, it might be a little heady. Uh, it's just explaining the problem. It's not trying to propose a solution. OK. Do we want to go uh, through that first and then come to the example afterwards? Uh, I, I would say no. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. Let's do the example that we have up on the screen. Okay, so so I, I made two scenarios. Um, you know, so so just assume either one or the other will will happen. Um, so so I'm just going to show you the graph quickly. Um, Mojo imports a factory, and there are one of two factories, each of which will just give a string. Um, Right. So the first example is straightforward. You're you're going to create a compartment, and I think this is the entry point. I might have um, confused the API. Uh, sorry, I, I couldn't refer. No, you, you, you got that right. Okay. And I'm just saying the map 
points, you know, these are the module records. So you would expect Mojo, at, at least up to here, that this one will uh, refer to factory A, so there will be a Mojo A as a string somewhere. Yeah. Um, let, let, me, let me just, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna interrupt and be pedantic. Uh, if I understood the compartment API, it's, uh, there is no, uh, it's not a, an options bag with the name map, it's just the second argument is the, oh, sorry, the third argument. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, uh, yes. So, so okay. let me edit this quickly so we can, you know, have that example. So, so what, what would the second argument be? Uh, open curly, close curly. That's just the endowments. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Now I recall. Yeah. And then uh, map goes away. So we have right. something like, uh, yes like this, semicolons. Yep. And this is start. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so let's update this. All right, so, so, so the top one, I know I'm getting the entry point. So if there's a, a, like a, a, you know, a module instance being created, I would assume potentially you could be getting two separate instances of Mojo. I'm not sure if that's true. OK, now what will happen um, here, there's start imports Mojo, right? So, so in example two, I'm setting my entry point to start. Yeah. Um, and here also you're saying there will be two instances of Mojo created or would start, since it refers to the same mapping, get the previous instance of Mojo, which used factory A. By, by, default, by default, everything is separate. Except, okay, perfect. Except if, uh, if module are explicitly shared by the uh, at the build time. Okay, perfect. Th thank you so much for, for clarifying on this. So okay. that would work exactly like you like you like to say. Separate module, separate yeah. So thank perfect. You. Okay. Yeah. Great, thanks. Yes. I lost everybody or? No, no, it just, um, I think, uh, I think we all arrived at uh, blissful clarity. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, it's, no, like, is... uh, it, it's, it, it's getting kind of late on my side of the world, so, but it's fine if we, if we stop here okay. and then we can, we can continue by, by mail. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, so I'm, I'm, I feel like, you know, we really do have arrived at a, at a point of significant clarity. So, um, uh, so let me, so if anybody else has questions, why don't we ask them now and then we can adjourn. Okay. Um, uh, I, I would, uh, uh, Patrick and Peter, uh, please share the current version of the document. Yes. Yes, sure. We'll post. Uh, we'll post that to the to the CES mailing list uh, a little bit later today. Okay. And Michael, uh, you and I should talk about uh, in our module work uh, trying to actually uh, implement the test cases that uh, they already have working on XS, so we can um, uh, see if we can uh, arrive at um, uh, ag agreement on the specification through very different mechanisms. And Mark, can I ask you something? If you have thought about 
uh, module maps using symbols instead of strings and all that kind of thing, please share. We are currently oh. discussing that. And, uh, and if you have ideas about that, you are most welcome. Okay, I, I have thought about it. I don't yet have something to share on that, uh, but that's a good goal for us for next time. Yes, whenever. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop recording and adjourn. Yes. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.